Hey, greetings Geo Nerds. We're going to have a look at today at the coastline in Moreton Bay. Because as we know, sea levels go up and down over time, and not even geological time. We're talking thousands of years, not millions of years or hundreds of millions of years, thousands of years. And at one stage, the coastline, and not that long ago, was about 20 kilometres on the other side of Morton Island. And there were people living here when that happened. So the green plains of Morton Bay had people living on them. So let's have a look at that today. I've got some interesting data. I've got some interesting graphs and some maps to show you the extent of how things have changed. And it didn't always go down. Sometimes sea level went up. This image you're seeing, the video you're seeing now, is indicative of the cliffs at Nudgee, just below the Australian Catholic University, and only about 4,000 years ago. And that's been proven. We'll talk more about that in the video. So anyway, you know what I'm gonna say. If you dig the vibe, like and subscribe. And since we're here, let's rock. Well, folks, here we are. We're hitching a ride on one of Electric Jesus' Starlink satellites, about oh, I don't know, 500 k's up. And uh, we just dropped off here, something you just can't do. And that's Moreton Bay. And the coastline used to be out here. Hmm, let's look at some details. So what we're looking at here, folks, is a chart showing a sea level rise going back in thousands of years. So... There's the human arrival in Seoul. Seoul, by the way, is Australia, when it was attached to New Guinea. And you're looking at LGM, it's not little green men, it's actually the last glacial maxima, which that's where the glaciers reached their peak and therefore the sea level reached its low. And as you can see, since then, sea level has risen uh, and it has risen just recently. If you look at the, uh, the blue line is an average, it's a mean sea level, but the gray are the peaks and troughs. So as you can see, only a few thousand years ago, sea level was quite a lot higher here than it is today. And that will change depending on glaciation. So uh, let's have a little look at uh, some maps as to what this looked like in Moreton Bay. So folks, what we're looking at here is Moreton Bay, about 12,000 years ago. The coast was way offshore, and the Brisbane River cut a channel right out to nearly the edge of the continental shelf. We can see some evidence of that in the continental shelf itself. So here we are, 9,000 years ago. The uh, sea level has risen a little, the coast has come in, the Brisbane uh, river has formed a big inlet still exiting up north of what is now Morton Island and between it and Bribey Island and uh, yeah you can see sea levels are rising. Well here we are folks 7,000 years ago as you can see sea levels have risen quite substantially they're actually higher than they were today and it's this is where your nudgy coastlines and all those paleo coastlines you can see down on the east side of Brisbane this is where they come from. So from about 2000 years ago to today, the coasts have been pretty much stable. They are where they are today. Although of course, as we know, because we've now seen it, when it comes to sea levels, it's always rising or falling. Well folks, we've talked about the Nudgee coastline, so here it is. 
There it is there. You see the, the big nudgy dump. There's the coastline down there. And you can actually see it over here as well. So let's have a 3D look at this. It might help you. So here we are. We're just above the dump there. There's those sea cliffs right there. This was like Shorncliffe is today, but four and a half thousand years ago, 4,300 years ago. And you can see it. And if you look at the cliffs closer, the erosion's there. And we know it because the Queensland Uni did an excavation here in relation to that development. And uh, they found radiocarbon dating evidence that shows that's exactly when it was. Well, folks, these paleo coastlines actually show up in the offshore LIDAR. They show up as a series of steps or terraces. And here they are. I've just marked them for you. And uh, then it's a they drop down by about 10 to 20 metres each time, then they stay level for a while, then they drop down again, and they end up obviously just falling off the continental shelf. This, by the way, is a piece of the shelf that is, has fallen and is going to continue to fall. So folks, let's go back in time. That's 5,000 years there, 10,000 years, 13,000 years. We're connected to New Guinea. That's Sol when it looks like that. 50,000 years ago, Tassie's all connected, 60,000, 80,000, 90,000, 100,000, 120,000, 130,000, 135,000 years ago. It comes and goes. It just does. So folks, here's a diagram showing you where the coastlines were in relation to a modern map. So the red one, which is at the LGM, you know, the last glacial maximum, but the green line is interesting because that is where the coastline was at the point which we have found the earliest evidence of human population in this area. And we'll discuss that because it's interesting and it's surprising. Well, folks, here's some young Aboriginal people here from the 1850s, and these are from Moreton Bay. This was taken in Brisbane. These are fine-looking, healthy young people. Let me tell you, they don't look like they're undernourished in any way. And we know that. They've been here for a very long time because over here on Stradbroke Island at Wallen Creek, 24,000 years ago, somebody built a campfire and radiocarbon dating nailed that. So if you look at the evidence of Aboriginal occupation in this area, Stradbroke is definitely the oldest we've found, but you've got to remember, Brisbane was almost destroyed as far as archaeology goes by the time we learnt what archaeology was. So this is uh, Aboriginal occupation evidence from around Australia. Now there's some older ones, oh they've been here 100,000 years, whatever. I'm not buying into that, I don't know. I just don't know the answer. But this is real. These are radiocarbon dates. And they were certainly here in Brisbane when Moreton Bay was a grassy plain. And they've probably witnessed it more than once. So folks, here we are, a worldview at the last glacial maximum. Sea level was 120 metres lower than it is now, about 24,000 years ago. And as you can see, it is a cycle, although it's a cycle that isn't repeating itself completely anymore. Well, folks, whether Moreton Bay looked like this, which it probably has at some stage, or it looked like this, which it almost certainly has at some stage. Or it again looks like this, which is probably the view from the Catholic uh, University looking out across the airport. By the way, the reason they did that dig down there is because of the airport development. They dug a series of archaeological holes across the area. They were looking at the carbon dating, which you can do with marine animals because the lime in their shells sequest the carbon calcium carbonate and they can tell how old they are and they found obviously evidence of Aboriginal occupation, middens, Aboriginals love eating seashells. Got a video on that somewhere. Anyway this is the way it was but as we've seen it is a cycle. It's cyclic but it is not a fixed cycle and there are some things happening in the world as we're not going to mention them because it'll just light the comments up but let me tell you we are interfering with this cycle. There is no question of 
that. Winds in the east, mist coming in. Like something is brewing, about to begin. Can't put me finger on what lies in store. I feel what's to happen, all happened before. So what's happening in the future, people? Well, there's a few different models out there. This is 2100 with a two metre sea level rise. This is what Brisbane will look like. Uh, you won't be living in the light blue bits and the dark blue bits are going to flood so regularly you won't want to live there. So I wouldn't say it's a disaster. It is if you happen to own freehold property in those areas. So. And the Gold Coast, you just don't want to see that map. You don't want to see it. But anyway, is this going to happen? Don't know. 2100? Well, if I'm alive, I'll be 140. So uh, I don't think it's going to worry me. But it is an indication. And it's an illustration that sea level rise and fall happens all the time. It just happens over time frames that we're not always aware of. So anyway, that's it for this week. Just a quick video. This came to me while I was walking along the front of those nudgy cliffs. I'm going, man, oh man, that looks like a coast. And it was. There you go. So anyway, if you dig the vibe, like and subscribe. And uh, until we meet again, keep rocking. T-Rox out. If you can't trust the governments of the world, then who can you trust?